Hi, I'm Sue Pasco. I'm a staff writer for the Palisadium Post, which is a weekly newspaper in Pacific Palisades. I'm also the healthy editor, which means once a month I write on a healthy topic. And when we talk about any kind of reproductive uh, things like in vitro or anything, I come to an expert to get the answers to all my questions. I'm talking about Dr. Ingrid Rohde, who is one of the top fertility specialists in the United States. And today I want to find out more about in vitro fertilization. Okay, so how did I end up here in your office? <laughs> Am I too old to have a baby? <laughs> I have three, but I'd like another one, and I will disclose I'm a little bit over 45. Is that too old? Well, for, for in vitro, many, there are many reasons to do in vitro fertilization. Uh, one is to obtain um, eggs from a younger donor for use in women who are typically over 45. So that would be me. I would probably... You would probably require a, a donor who was uh, less than 30 uh, years of age and then we would uh, remove those, the eggs from the donor, fertilize them in the dish with your husband's sperm and then you would carry the pregnancy. But is he too old? Because he's over 45 too. Well, you know, men uh, don't have the sort of the cutoff that women have. Uh, they're, well, that's just not fair. <laughs> well, we evolve differently. The, the, the women evolved one way and men evolved a different way. So not all men can uh, have babies until they're 80, but some can. And that's certainly not the case for women. By the time women are 50, uh, virtually... Uh, We're done. Complete. Pretty much done, yeah. Uh, on our own accord. Yes. On our own accord. With, with your own eggs. Okay, so then I would have to pay someone, a younger person, for the egg, which you would then put with my husband's sperm, implanted in me and I would carry the baby to pregnancy. And, yes. Sometimes uh, couples will use an embryo that has been donated by another couple and that's another way of, um, of having a pregnancy uh, when a woman is no longer able to use her own eggs. Uh, how much is this going to cost me? In vitro. I saw, I went to the internet yesterday, <laughs> and I saw I can have in vitro done for $6,800. Is that about the going rate? Well, you know, you have to look at the different components. So uh, one of the components is the medication, which runs about $5,000 for one cycle. You have to consider the medication. Then you have well, to... The, what's the medication for? I the mean, medication is to make extra eggs, because it's a very inefficient process if you go ahead and... Um, just uh, remove one egg at a time. So we give medications to increase the number of eggs so that we can re we have more eggs to, to work with. So the younger person who would be donating the egg to me, she would have to go on medication that's about $5,000 and that would produce more than one egg. And typically right. how many eggs does that produce? Well, we try not to overdo it, so we're looking in the 15 to 20 egg range. Anything over that becomes dangerous to the donor. Okay, so we now have spent 5000 to have this woman give 15 to 20 eggs. Right, that's just the medications. Okay, okay. and what happens? Uh, you have the... In order to have a donor, unless you arrange for the donor yourself, you're typically using a, an agency, and the agency um, has an agency fee, and that ranges anywhere from probably uh, five to fifteen thousand dollars. And then the donor gets a fee, and th that fee ranges somewhere between five and fifty thousand dollars. Wow! So even if everything was five thousand, I'm looking at fifteen thousand, sort of the cheapest case scenario. Right, and with an egg donor, it's it's higher because you have to, you're involving a third party. And even if it were your sister, you would still have to have her see a psychologist and have a legal agreement. So um, when you're using a donor, it's more expensive than if a younger woman is doing in vitro fertilization for her own, uh, with her own eggs. But at my age, that's pretty much my only alternative. That's right. Other than adoption. Right. Okay, so then what do I need to do to prepare for the pregnancy then? Do I have to do anything? Well, uh, you would be called a recipient and okay. uh, we would make, make sure that your hormones were normal and that your uterine lining was going to be um, accepting of the embryo. 
and then um, the donor would go through a regular in vitro the regular in vitro fertilization process. So she would be getting injections every day, and then we would be monitoring uh, her ovaries okay. with, with ultrasound to uh, see how many eggs she's making and to uh, make to see what the right timing is. So that's probably why it's so expensive. If she has to have these injections every day, what what are you injecting her with? We're injecting her with follicle stimulating hormone okay. in order to make more eggs. So in, in you, we're measuring the lining of the uterus. Okay, and is this me now or is that's, this a, that's the donor? That's you. Okay. And you're measuring the lining of the uterus. And in the donor, we're measuring the follicles. So now these are follicles. Oh, so this is this over is by where, the fallopian tubes or where are you measuring? This is this? in the ovary. Oh, this is in the ovary, okay. Right, and that's the first ultrasound that we do, and there's a small follicle there. So she's starting to develop the follicles. Right, and then as she uh, takes the medication, she starts, they start growing, and, sh and we recruit uh, more of them. Right now there's three. Yeah, and in, in this one now you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just in one ovary. Okay. And. Uh, at, at some point, about five days out, you're not making any more, you're just growing them. So you can see that... Uh, so you probably should harvest it before your ovary bursts or right. something. Right. So, so you can see the size on that one. Right. Uh, they're about 15 millimeters, and now we're up to about 18 millimeters. And these are all healthy eggs that we're making here? Well, they're, is, the younger the individual, the, the healthier they are. And you're, at the same time, you're lining is growing and uh, now we have an, a lining that's eight millimeters and that's very and, nice. And how am I growing this lining? You're giving me drugs too? Yeah, we're giving you estrogen to, to make that lining grow. Nice and thick. Okay, so she's ready to be harvested. Right. And then you go in and you you said you harvest between like 15 and 20? Right. We, we harvest everything we've got but typically that's what we're aiming for and uh, we put a um, ultrasound probe in the vagina. Uh -huh. The donor is asleep at this point. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yes. uh, in most cases. And uh, we put the needle into each one of these follicles, step on a pedal, and the egg ends up in the little fallopian tube. So in like the, a vacuum sorry, cleaner? In the, in, the little, <laughs> yeah, in the little test tube. And that's why it's sometimes called test tube baby. Ah, okay. Okay, and then... But it really operates like a vacuum then, then sort of, yes. doesn't it? Sort of sucks. Okay. Yep. And then we, uh, the, the lab identifies the egg. Okay. And there are two ways that we can fertilize uh, now, the eggs. Before you get to fertilizing, do you, like, I mean, are some eggs look better than other eggs? Or Yes, yeah, so they do. But pretty much, uh, if we got the timing right, they're all pretty much mature and ready to be fertilized. Okay. Uh, so then there are two ways of fertilizing these eggs. One, we can just put uh, your husband's sperm into the dish with the egg and let them fertilize on their own. Do they do that? Uh, they, they typically can, especially if you've had children before. Or if we have any concerns about that, we can uh, take the uh, sperm and inject them into the egg. And uh, that pretty much uh, will make sure that most of the eggs will be fertilized. And then we let the uh, embryos grow in the dish, and then on the fifth day, we'll put one of the embryos back into you. One? Just one. I want to be like Octomom. How no, do I get no, eight in no, me? No, just one. Just oh. one, because, <laughs> the, because your donor is only 25 years old, and uh, one at a time. Well, how did the Octomom end up with eight? Because she had 12 put in her. How many do you normally put in someone? One. So uh, you would only, we would only recommend uh, you're getting one. Okay, so we now have one egg, one fertilized egg put in my uterus. What's the next step that happens? Uh, and then um, I'll show you what it looks like once uh, a patient gets pregnant. Okay. So, um, and it, because the sperm and egg are healthy and everything else has been checked out and my uterus has been brought up to speed with estrogen, it right. should be an okay pregnancy. Right. With the exception of being older mother, maybe having 
those issues? So, some issues uh, in terms of a, a high risk pregnancy, in terms of um, more diabetes and more hypertension. But especially if we put in only one, um, you should be able to be taken care of in a way that will, will do good. And uh, how successful is that to do it like that? I mean, how? More than 50% of women will get pregnant from one try. Wow, that's pretty good, given the fact that you aren't supposed to be pregnant at all at that age, according right. to your body. So now you've implanted the embryo in my uterus, which is healthy because I'm taking estrogen, I'm feeling very good, and I'm feeling good, right, with the estrogen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm feeling very good. And then what happens? Well, about two weeks after we put the embryo back in, um, we get a, a pregnancy hormone level. and. Um, we follow that along for about two weeks and we watch it, the number climb. Can I take a pregnancy test at home just to see? You can, and most of the patients do get a little sneak preview, but we do like them to come in and actually get the, the number. And, and why uh, is that things. number sort of important? It gives us an idea of how strong the pregnancy is, and it also gives us a baseline to compare the next one to. Oh, okay. The ones at home are just a yay or nay kind of thing. But it's nice to have the little things say blue, yes or no. Yes, it is. Especially it is. if you've been trying and you haven't had a, any, yes. success, any success so far. That's true. And then okay. two weeks later, we do the first ultrasound, and uh, we look for the gestational sac. So we're about a month into it then. Right. Okay. It was a gestational sac. And that's the little uh, yolk sac which feeds the embryo. The embryo is a tiny little dot there. Um, wow, it looks like it's about the size of a pin. Yeah. Uh, Manhattan, I until um, and and that that yolk sac feeds the the embryo for the the first uh, several weeks. And then do you do a, a blood test again to see if my pregnancy hormones going up? One, once we can see it on ultrasound, the ultrasound is, is a more sensitive test, so we uh, typically are not doing uh, that many blood, blood tests testing. anymore. We do mainly ultrasounds. Okay. So a couple of weeks later, uh, we see. Um, that the yeah, a couple of weeks later, is this normal for a normal pregnancy to do ultrasounds every two weeks, or is this mostly because it's sort of like... Because of the fertility patients. patients? Okay. Yeah. Um, the fertility patients are getting closer monitoring. So between the, the two X's here is the embryo. Oh, it's See, grown quite a bit. Grown quite a bit. And then um, we do another one. You can see that now... We have a, you know, the head and the body, and if this were um, on, we could see the little heartbeat in there as well. Is this the little eye area right there? No, that's it's uh, nothing in particular. This part of the baby. Yeah, embryo, I should say. Yeah, that's still an embryo. And now we're we're already onto a fetus. After eight weeks, it's a fetus, and you can see uh, more and more. Uh, that's the head, the body, the umbilical cord, the little arm buds and leg buds. And, um, and then we're getting to the end of the first trimester here. And in this case, we're looking um, to make sure we have all the parts and um, make like sure there's nothing abnormal. Like, is this the spinal cord? This is the, the yes, that's, you, you, see, you don't see the cord, but you see the little uh, bones. Mm -hmm. And then um, once the patient gets to about uh, thir um, 11 or 12 weeks, then she goes on to her obstetrician who will continue the prenatal care and deliver her. So then after that time, even though you've been that close with them, they move on to a, just a regular doctor then? Yes, just because it's very difficult to be doing the uh, everything that patients need from a fertility point of view and delivering babies at the same time. Some, some people do, um, but I limit my practice uh, to the fertility part and refer the patients on to obstetricians. And I, I would imagine you get rather close with the patients because you see them weekly? Every yes, day? Pretty, yeah, either weekly or even more than weekly when they're doing their fertility treatments. So we stay in touch. You know, the holidays is a good time because we see pictures from uh, from the babies. From the babies. <laughs> That's got to be the best part, doesn't it? That's the best part, right? Babies.